divergent reactions continue to trail Tuesday's call by the Forum of Southern Governors to ban open cattle grazing in the entire southern states of the country, as well as other thornier issues raised in their resolution. Uh, expectedly, while the North kicked vigorously against the position of Southern Governors, itemized in a 12-point communique, Southern leaders embraced the move and called for necessary legislation to ban the back the ban on open cattle grazing. To look at these issues in context, he's a renowned professor of political science at the Lagos State University, Professor Sylvester Odiwa Kain. Welcome to the program, Prof. Hello, Prof. Again. Yeah. Before we go into the thorny issues raised in the community, and considering the growing spate of insecurity in the country, how timely is this meeting of the Southern Governor, sir? I think it's even belated. It was a belated meeting. Don't forget that the Southern governors have behaved as though uh, all, all was well with the country, you know, before their meeting, allowing non-state actors to seize the initiative, particularly in southeastern Nigeria, and of course even in southwest, uh, southwestern Nigeria. You know, people like uh, the IPOP, and uh, of course uh, individuals like Sunday Igboho had to take the initiative to protect their own people. You know, the insecurity is so glaring, we leave it. And we thought that the, gov the governors would have been proactive, you know, within the limits of the constitution to try and provide, put in place some measures, you know, to curb what has become unbearable, you know, for, for the citizenry. But of course they didn't do that. But now that they are waking up, you know, uh, to the reality, and I think it's a welcome, you know, development. Let's look at some of the issues that was raised. Uh, first is the issue of uh, ban on uh, open grazing. Uh, Mieti Ala has called the governor's move uh, a, a call for secession. And uh, they, they've also uh, said that the ban on open grazing negates the 1999 constitution. What's your take on this, sir? There is nothing in the, 19, in the 1999 constitutions that permits open grazing. And I mean, those are not the issues that the ground norm concerns itself about. Ground norm is concerned about basic, you know, constitutional scaffoldings, you know, for running the affairs of the country. And things like open grazing and the rest of them, these are regu regulatory issues that can even be devolved, you know, to subsidiary governments, like local governments and sub-national governments like the states. They can't take measure. There's no, there's no country in the 21st century where you begin to run uh, cattle or cows on the streets. It is not done. These are confined you know, to agricultural settlements. You know? And of course, there is also uh, what, what I would call, um, uh, in economics, what they call uh, not just economic of scale, comparative advantage. Those who can you know, uh, uh, do ranching, can do ranching, you know, and sell to those whose major preoccupation is not, is not about uh, rearing you know, cows, you know, uh, uh, developing cows and, and cattle within their domain. And don't forget that these issues that we are confronting today had been taken care of you know, several years back. One of the formula that Chief Abafa Mayor Wallow Wap, you know, provided at that time was that we should develop functional ray, ray routes from the south to the north. That the train can bring, you know, slaughtered, I mean, beef from the, uh, from the north to the south. Why the train take back, you know, our grasses to the north to feed the cow? Because I, I feel like somebody like Chief Abafa Mayor Wallow Wap thought that given the, the, uh, the, the diversity of, of this country, that there was the need to protect you know, the space of the component nationalities in ways that you can avoid friction. And for me, I think that that dual way economy that Chief Obama and Wallawa provided you know, was positive and was you know, uh, a well thought out idea in terms of dealing with the problem that we are confronted today. I must say that what we are confronted today is contrived you know, by the central you know, government that has run the country you know, as, as a, an ethnic 
you know, enclave, you know, where other ethnicities are dominated. I think that's the problem we are really confronting. In the past, even when, you know, they had cows across the southern, southern part of the country, it was a seasonal operation. It was seasonal. They take the, uh, the, the cows, they take them back during the uh, rainy season, and during dry season, they bring them down, you know, towards the south. That was the way it was done then. But we are, we are even saying that even that practice is outdated. You know, and modern farming is on the basis of, you know, uh, of herding, uh, I mean, of producing or developing cow or cattle is on the basis of uh, ranching. Firing the first salvo of opposition was Professor Usman Yusuf, the former executive secretary of the National Health Insurance Scheme, who faulted the decision because uh, the Southern governors did not consult Fulani leaders before making the no grazing resolution. In uh, his statement, he said, and I quote it, that Southern governors must provide land for Fulani bandits to graze their cattle if they want to ban open grazing. And that gathering in one hotel and giving a blanket ban is irresponsible. What's your take on this uh, statement made by uh, Professor Yusuf, sir? I think that um, it's marks of the usual arrogance of the Fulani elites who think that Nigeria is their property. Nigeria is a multinational country. And Fulani is just a, a tiny minority within the Nigerian population. And so they cannot force their wish on Nigerians. The Sata governors have the right make laws for the good governance of the, of, of the territory that they control within the Nigerian constitution. And they do so to the extent that it is conducive, it is beneficial to their own citizens. Everybody knows that the security situation that is in, in Nigeria today is contrived by the ruling Fulani elites in Nigeria. Bandits were brought into this country, they have ad admitted to it, and they have engendered the insecurity that we have across the country today to the extent that indigenous people can't go to their farms. They can't eat out a living. And so they have engendered, consequently, despondency in this country. And so the action that the, the, the southern governors have taken, coming belatedly, it's a step in the right direction. It's a step in the right direction. And those who are blackmailing governors who have taken measures to restore security to their own people, to create a conducive atmosphere for the pursuit of happiness of their own people, are the people who want this country break up. And I, I have always emphasized this point that nations are not permanent entity. They undergo you know, constant transition. And so is, Nigeria is not a given. It's not a given. It's a historical construct, and it can be you know, restructured in different ways. Talking about uh, restructuring, talking about the issue of restructuring both, uh, part, part of the uh, resolutions of the 17,000 governors was that, that, that despite the widespread agitations among uh, the various people for greater inclusiveness in existing governance arrangement, the government, federal government uh, was asked to convoke a national dialogue as a matter of urgency. I mean, what kind of national dialogue? Now, this country has had different kinds of confab. Uh, we, 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 we still remember the, national, the confab report or, or during the Jonathan years. Are we talking about a, a, a new constitution, a total restructuring and overhauling of the uh, entire uh, quota system uh, uh, being abolished at uh, the true federal system or regional government? What kind of restructuring is are we looking at? It? Does this country? I, I, I think that uh, if you if you look at uh, history a little bit, after the civil war in the United States of America, the states in America were functioning as independent entity. You know, almost a, a, a quasi confederal structure. But of course, they sat back again. I went back to, to Pennsylvania. 
you know, some utility, some enable the, the, the then, you know, colonies to run the country, you know, on the national level. The ways that the, the peoples of America can communicate across, you know, states. And that was the basis of the evolution of the federal government we have in the United States. In Nigeria, Nigeria was a colonial contraption. And what we have today, what we have at independence, you know, of course, some measure of discussion went into it through the Lacan Star House dialogue. And so we had a constitution that was fairly federal, you know, and that gave uh, a great deal of control over resources, you know, to the then federated regions. But we do know that since the incursion of the military into politics in Nigeria, they have atomized the federal structure. And everything has been run on the basis of centralism over centralization. And allowing a hegemony you know, of certain elements within the country to dominate the affairs of the country. These issues have cropped up severally. And they have been the basis, as you said, of national conferences. But what the governors are doing you know, is that Nigeria is at the tipping point. Mm. So they are trying to, you know, take the country off the brink. And so you, dialogues can never be too many in nation building. You know, they are saying our country is going to fall apart. If we must remain one, let us dialogue. Let us dialogue and then let us, you know, refederalize in ways that the peoples of this country, the component nationalities, you know, have a great deal of autonomy to chart their development. You know, we clearly defined area, you know, for the union list, where the, government, the central government probably will have, you know, a certain jurisdiction. That is the, the point that is being made. You know, if you don't allow for dialogue, and I keep telling them that the youth of today will not tolerate, you know, the, don't have a great deal of, of patience that our own forefathers had. It is clear that, you know, the structure of Nigeria today has held back the development of this country. Some people want to go to the moon, others say they want to go back to the medieval period. And there is no way if we triumph, we start resistance, you know, from our people. And so, and that is why I, I, I I made the philosophical point that nations are not part of the socialist uh, Soviet republics. How it became 50 countries. We saw Yugoslavia. How many countries turned out from Yugoslavia? We saw Czechoslovakia. Uh, how many countries came out of it? We saw even India at the point of independence. Pakistan broke away. Bangladesh, you know, broke away. So there's nothing sacrosanct about the unity of Nigeria. The unity can only, you know, be attractive. To the extent that it serves, it serves the cause of freedom and development of the peoples of Nigeria. When it is not doing that, you know, there's no missing word about it. We have to chart, you know, our ways, you know, our developmental, you know, uh, pro uh, processes in different ways. Now, Prof, uh, much has actually been said about and uh, criticism uh, continue to grow about the nepotistic appointments made by uh, the president and. Uh, Part of the recommendations of, uh, of the Southern governors, uh, 17 Southern governors, was that there is a need to review appointments to federal government agencies to reflect federal character as Nigeria's overall population is heterogeneous. And uh, we find out, for example, that the majority of uh, you know, security heads or heads of security parasitals are from one section of the country. I mean, isn't it worrying? I mean, when you talk about the contradictions of the Nigerian state, that is one of the major contradictions. Even as limited as the, the, the 19, 19, 1999 constitution is, you know, the ruling elite has deliberately subverted that constitution. The federal character principle is embedded in that constitution. They have deliberately subverted it, you know, mainstreaming, mainstreaming the preferences of that ruling Kaba over, over the rest of the country. And then talking about security within that context, in fact, I, I mean, it is being, of course, uh, ridiculed, even in the social in the social media space, that the security uh, so-called security council meeting they had is a family security council council meeting, meeting essentially of the Fulani's you know Fulani's talk. So you 
not run a, a multinational country of over 200 million people that way. Anybody that think that Nigeria can be run, run in that way must be dreaming or living in a, a, a you know, some, some uh, utopia. You know, Nigeria is in, is in a total, total state of lawlessness. And you want to govern in the interest of the people, and you then alienate, you know, a large section of the population. You can't govern. No state actors will take over. We seize the space. And not even that. I mean, it's like adding his elite to the country and gender the security dilemma that Nigeria is in today. They brought in bandits from all parts of West Africa. And they have become terror to this country. And it effort by states and the people themselves to rid themselves of this barbarity is being stored by the same central government. You know, and I mean, I wonder if they think that in the 21st century, with all our education and exposure, that we tolerate this domination, they must be they must be living in a fool's paradise. Finally, Prof. Um, one of the grave concern. Uh, has to do with the security challenge plaguing the nation. And the, the 17 uh, Southern governors urged Mr. President to address Nigeria on the challenges of his security and restore the confidence of our people. Uh, questions are being raised as to uh, the, the, the ability of the president to actually uh, perform his uh, duties, considering the fact that he has uh, is suffering from a kind of dementia, uh, another uh, undisclosed illnesses. Uh, there are reports that he'll be traveling to Paris in a couple of days uh, for, uh, to meet with his doctors. Uh, how worried should Nigerians be with respect to the ability of this president to actually perform and nip the security challenges of the country in the board? I think the, that statement is uh, of addressing the nation. It's just one of those tools in brickmanship. The governors themselves are only humoring themselves. Say that the, the, the president should address you know, the country. They know he lacks the capacity. He lacks the intellectual capacity and the physical awareness to be able to do that. And that is the problem of this country. If all of us put the development of this country before us, you know, devoid of ethnic you know, inclinations and proclivities, we ought to ask the president to resign. That is the best thing to do, and the vice will step in. But again, because these people, you know, are fixated to power, just for power's sake, unable to instrumentalize power for development and, you know, create social, an atmosphere of social justice in the country, they want to remain there, you know, uh, hiding under the guise of the 1999 constitution that prescribed two terms, you know, uh, limits for an equipment. Bro, thank you so much for your insightful analysis. We really appreciate your time.